And we're here at RSA Conference 2019. I'm sitting with Rich Gardner. He's the Principal Security Architect for XM Cyber. Rich, welcome. Hey, Paul, how are you? Nice it's to good. see you. It's good to see you. It's nice to meet you. And um, I'm excited to talk about the uh, pen testing versus red teaming versus purple teaming and versus how you automate that in, in your products, which uh, for our listeners I've seen and I really, really like. So. Awesome. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Watch your show a lot. Get a lot of good information awesome. out of you guys. Thank you. And uh, definitely love to promote you guys. So I do awesome. that but every time I get a chance. Thank you. Um, yeah, so depending on who you talk to, this seems to be a an issue to pen testing versus red teaming. Mm -hmm. And just that general understanding of the differentiators, when to do it, when not to do it, who's doing it, things of that nature, really become um, uh, an area where, where folks need to look at, am I testing from the outside in? Mm -hmm. All right, so if you're testing, in my opinion, okay, and that's gonna vary, but in my opinion, if you're testing from the outside in, that's gonna be a pen test. That's gonna mm -hmm. be somebody that you're gonna hire to say, listen, either A, based on the engagement, Mm -hmm. um, you could say, I only want to give you my name, my company name. You go and find ever, out everything, everything else. Everything else, right. Um, I'm going to give you a limited scope. Mm -hmm. Just attack this piece. So that becomes very concise mm -hmm. or very wide, depending on the scope of the engagement. And a lot of communication has to happen there, too, to make sure I'm... If I'm the tester, I'm actually testing your assets and not someone else who I don't have permission to test. Exactly. Right? You know, and you, you also have a lot of uh, no fault documentation <laughs> floating back oh, and yeah. forth, you oh, know, yeah. because oh, yeah. some of the stuff that pen testers do, I mean, I, I've, I've done a little bit of it. I'm not by any stretch of the imagination uh, that offensive guy. I'm more of a defensive mm -hmm. guy, but, um, you know, I've, I've looked at it. I've knocked over switches and routers, you know? Oh, yeah. It's, 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 everyone has. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's not fun. <laughs> it's not. It's not. <laughs> so red teamers. Um, red teamers, I think, and I've, I've talked to a lot of them as of most recently, where they're doing the internal pen test. They're, mm -hmm. they're the folks that understand the assets. They understand the business. Mm -hmm. um, they understand the criticality of the crown jewels. Mm -hmm. So... A lot of red teamers will look at certain areas of their business and go, again, it could be based on scope or, or what mm -hmm. sort of information they're getting from their management team. But if they're going to look at their different scopes and go, I need to go from point A to point B. And I need to see if my, this is where it goes into purple teaming, I need to see if my security operations center is seeing me actually do this. Right. And I think that kind of dovetails into adversary simulation right yeah and whether you have a product and or a person doing or a team of people doing that i think there's value in, in both certainly but that's almost like a different level where you're going to have a, a product which i really like being able to do that and putting that in the hands of different people but also have an external team to say yeah we are going to try and persist in a specific manner with a specific goal in mind, like you said, understanding the assets in the business impact, what effort would it take and how long could I persist without being detected right. in that engagement? Well, and that's that's the, I think the BAS category, the breach and attack simulation mm -hmm. category really attack, no pun intended, but attacks that issue. Sure. Right? So it, with, with XM, we give red teamers that force multiplier mm -hmm. right my, my partner in anti-crime Steve he, he coined that phrase and I'm stealing it mm -hmm. um, but that force multiplier in my opinion uh, is is elevating and getting the red teamers more visibility more consistent visibility mm -hmm. that that constant testing now we're not there to take the place of a red team we're mm -hmm. not there to take the place of of a, of a person we're helping helping them elevate their game by constantly testing, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. but also it gives them the ability to focus more on higher level techniques, mm -hmm. right? More of the trade craft that they need to spend time with um, to really get the security level and that security maturity model up further and get mm -hmm. dig into that purple teaming, dig into how the security operations center is responding to what's happening. It's interesting, Rich, when you say that. It makes me think of uh, 
uh, the kind of unscientific data study that I've done to say that uh, <laughs> internal red teams are so oversubscribed that they can't possibly test anywhere close to all of the assets in the environment. No. Right? I've heard that from it's unhuman. pen testers. I've heard that from the vendor community that's working in this space. And, and so you're not yet, like that's true, right? Like they're just oversubscribed. You, you and just they can't. need a tool like this to automate, have this test running all the time so that I can go focus on the really, really fun stuff, the really, really cool yeah. stuff, and the stuff that's really impactful to the business that requires a human to spend time on that and, and go do that, right? Absolutely. And now I've got this thing that's running and it's telling me and on the other defenders what where our deficiencies are so that we can fix them. I yeah, mean, that's, got, I, that, that's, how, that's the approach today that I think every enterprise needs to adopt, right? I, told, I couldn't agree more. Um, uh, there, there's another uh, gentleman who, who, Ed Amoroso, I don't know if you know mm -hmm. Ed. I don't know. Um, but anyway, he was a former CISO of uh, AT&T. Mm -hmm. And he, he flat out said, it just doesn't make sense that a business shouldn't be doing this. Right. You know, and when, when well, you... Well, I don't think we had the tools. And it's um, reminded of the open source and it's Metasploit. And then they released this feature called Autopone. I don't know if you remember that. And the early versions were really rough around the edges yeah. but it started me thinking about that concept like what if i could do that all the time and now i fast forward to today and when i see solutions such as yours that i'm like wow i wish i had that 15 years ago when i was a practitioner at this particular place right and, uh, and that's you you're taking the words right out of my mouth honestly because mm -hmm. so i told you i i, I like playing the defensive side mm -hmm. right i like doing that with jujitsu which i'm a big jujitsu nut mm -hmm. but uh I, d I play defense to wait and see what happens and then i then i launch into that offensive so i'm i'm very familiar and i do do a lot of uh reading and research around the offensive side mm -hmm and build my defense of my security architectures around that. I can't even begin to tell you how many times I have said to people, you build a security architecture. How do you know that it's secure? Mm -hmm. You need to test it. Mm -hmm. And are you gonna be able to test that all over the place and consistently? You don't know, for example, um, the most common thing that we see is normal operation. I open up an SSH, uh, SSH putty to one of my Linux boxes in AWS, mm -hmm. right? Well, if I own your box, I just got your key, you know, your- Riding your, right on your credentials, yep, right? all your credentials right there. Now that's normal operation. What security tool is going to pick that up? Right. Okay, RDP keyboard sniffs, mm -hmm. things of that nature. These are normal operations. And, you know, a lot of folks could go back and say, listen, you know, we deploy and cloud is the big thing, right? It, where we deploy everything by code. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody logs into our systems. Come on. Right, yeah. <laughs> if well, you're a developer and you don't yeah. see something working, right. you're gonna be like, okay. <laughs> I think across the board, the whole attitude that many have towards testing is somewhat you know, lackluster and requires more experience. So for example, I built a new firewall architecture, right? multiple internets, multiple firewalls, multiple switches. And, you know, working with my, my intern, he's like, it's great, like, we built it, it's good, we can go on to the next thing. I'm like, no, we can't. We gotta test it. We gotta test it. And we have to test every scenario. And I think, you know, networking and systems people are better about testing that functionality. But yet, when it comes to security, they're like, oh, no, no, we, we, we can't test that all the time. And I'm like, why not? It's just another really level of your quality assurance testing to make sure it works, to make sure it's secure, yeah. reliable, and, and it has integrity, right? That's all part of a testing suite that we've CIA seen in DevSecOps, triad, right? but that's got to translate to sysadmins and network operations too, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, uh, uh, throwing a lot of shout outs there. A good friend of mine who works for an insurance company, I won't mention who, but mm. he's, I, I give him major kudos because he's actually doing that. He's building the purple team. He's, he's uh, you know, we're talking to him about, you know, testing our stuff. But at the end of the day, that's what we're there for. We're there to help right. organizations build those purple teams mm -hmm. um, because we're giving that continual testing. Mm -hmm. We're giving you the remediation report. So yep. a lot of red teamers, and I heard this yesterday at B-Sides, um, you know, red teamers were coming up and they're like, 
Oh, cool. So you do red te- uh, you know, automated simulated red teaming. And then as soon as I mentioned the remediation mm. to shut down those campaigns, they were like, oh, that's really cool because right. I stop at, you know, consider sucking less. And you guys now right. add that extra thing that we don't have to do. And I'm like, exactly. So we're helping. It, I, I feel like it operationalizes the... Uh, attack and remediation process which it was sorely lacking before we had vendors such as yourselves giving us these solutions right because I was a pen tester I'd issue a report they'd look at the report and go okay that's great we'll work on that stuff and then we'd re-engage the next year we wouldn't really talk much for that that year I go back and I'm like you guys really haven't fixed anything sure and all my pen test friends today say the same thing then when we started seeing the attack and simulation I'm like this is a way to operationalize that. So we're constantly purple teaming. We're constantly testing, remediating, testing, remediating, testing. I think it's a much better approach. I think it's very similar to Agile and DevOps, right? But now we're translating it into a network, which was so important to raise that bar for our security and our organizations today. Yeah, absolutely. And, and with the speed of DevOps, with the speed of yeah. Agile, um, you're Having seen your product, very easy to deploy. Absolutely. Very easy to get in there, have it report on what's wrong, report that to the right people, and continually run that test and be persistent, right? I mean, that's kind of your, I think one of the differentiators is your the software can live on these systems and continually test to identify gaps and threats. So when I first interviewed uh, for the organization, uh, I was coming from and you can see it on my LinkedIn, but mm-hmm. I was coming from a from a cloud agent mm-hmm. environment. And uh, so I, w- I was very sensitive to the sensors that are being deployed and what sort of impact they would have mm-hmm. on the systems, on production, things mm-hmm. of that nature. This is one of the first products as early as they've come out, out of stealth, that built in metrics for CPU, for for endpoint resource resource utilization, where we're giving you that information. Now, if you dive down into it- We work with another vendor, it's the same kind of telemetry, and I think it's a fantastic trend. You have to, you have to, to because so many people are are gun shy to sensors, and they go, oh, it's just another agent. Well, okay, so let's kind of differentiate between agent and sensor, right? Mm -hmm. And I I like to differentiate uh, that. An agent is typically has a user interface, is typically configurable. Right. Our sensors? No one should see it on the end. There's no user interface. It's a service that's running. It runs in user mode, so we're Mm -hmm. not running at that deep kernel mode. Uh, So we also have guardrails built around it, which that's another huge aspect. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't think about that when they're looking at endpoint solutions they just automatically jump back because they've had so many times that they've been burnt with them. Mm -hmm. But we thought about that. We said, okay, we're going to put in guardrails. So if the CPU goes beyond like 5, 10, 15%, Mm. it's going to shut down. We're going to restart because we all know things get wonky with Windows, right? Right. So we want to make sure that we're not impacting the user. Mm -hmm. We're not impacting that production application. So we, we keep those guardrails there. If it shuts down too many times, it it just goes offline. Mm -hmm. It's still, we still see that in the console. You're still able to address it. The sensor management is also done right from ours. So you can actually deploy Mm -hmm. sensors from our management console, which is new since I think you looked at it. Mm -hmm. Um, And also you can kill it. You can disable it. You can uninstall it. There's so many different things that you could do, and that's that's a wonderful aspect of getting over that fear of deploying sensors. Right. Awesome. Rich, thank you so much. No, thank you, Paul. I really appreciate it. And, I, and again, I think you got a great show. Thank and, you. Uh, good luck here at RSA. I hope you have a great time. Thank you. Make sure you check out XM Cyber if you're here at RSA or after the show if you're watching this. Uh, it's a great product. I really like it. So Thanks, Paul. Thank you.